First of all, I want to uh, just emphasize my ID, identity, because it's important in case you get uh, poo high hi somewhere down the road. <coughs> yeah. My uh, whakapapa is also to Ngāti Pikiao, mainly Ngāti Pikiao. Um, but I come from a few uh, feudalistic uh, leaders of the past. Uh, first one is uh, Haere Huka, who caused the Battle of Tutumu, Ngāti Tunuhopu. There was Haere Huka, Rakitu, Rakitu, Ani Pai Raka, who married Kamata. And of course, that's my great grandma, uh, mother and father, on that side. And that's the connection into Ngāti Pigia. <clears throat> the second one is Mataya Fair. I come down through Mataya Fair, Mataya Fair, Mitai, Mitai, Te Ao Kore Wārangi. Te Ao Kore Wārangi married, married uh, Yeni Tapsil. And Yeni Tapsil, that's where all the Rolestons and all uh, the Walters and all those families come from, and I'm part of the, that on my grandmother's side. The other line I come from in uh, Ngāti Pagawe, obviously, is Tohi Tūrurangi. Tohi Tūrurangi was killed at the Kao Kao Ro, and he was a prominent chief of Rorotarangi. He had a daughter called uh, Ngātai, and um, <coughs> she married Reti Reti Tapsul. And of course, Reti Reti had Ta Ta Tapsul had Finwariri, and Finwariri was my grandfather. So there's, there's connection. But Finwariri's mother was, was Tepokia's wife, senior wife. Yeah. And uh, Tereiti was her name. <coughs> now there's a waiata called Erere Te Ao. It's about Tereiti composing this song on the Oho Bridge. She was pining for Tepokia. Tepokia was away at Repokaitu at the time. <coughs> and of course, she cohabitated with my other great grandfather, it was Ta Tapsul. And, but Finwaridi was brought up amongst his, his mother's people. Martine Fakawe, Martine Fakawe was Tamakari, Tamakari of Ngati Pikia. And then over to Rangi Unora, well, I'm about both sides, on the Kamata side as well as the Martine Fakawe side. So all uh, Taru White and all of them, they come from Ngawiki. And then uh, there's others that come from Ngahaka, and I come from Tereiti. Yeah, three, six, and that's our Tatakinga uh, Tamakari line. <clears throat> and when I was brought up, I was brought up on uh, the Tamakari Ngati Makino lands. That was above Little Waihi. Originally, they were the owners of Little Waihi, and we had the farm up there. The farm was called Ngamaho. And I was brought up with all the old people after the war, and that's where <coughs> I learnt a lot of to watch the moon and stars. We had all these big war heroes, they came back and they were scared of the dark. Yeah, so you had to go, go in and uh, while they went under the tree to have a leak, you had to go out, outside there with them and, and we used to have them on, have these big heroes on. You say, did you hear that? And then they'll, they'll go, what did you hear? Yeah, they, they come rushing up, you see? <laughs> but those are the heroics. There was something in our, our world a mystic world. And of course, I always ask the question, did God make man or did man make God? Sometimes when we go back in our history, we seem to, it seems to fit in that we made our gods for our benefit. We collated evolutionary history for our benefit. So the story of Rangi and Papa, you know, they were solo parents too, you know. Solo parents today, they were the same as old uh, Paula Benetton. <coughs> yeah. See, uh, most of the kids went with Papa Tūnuku, and the other ones went with, uh, with uh, Rangi, the Sky Father. Yeah. Tāpuri Vātea is a classic example, the rainmaker. Yeah. 
Tafri Matel makes all the rain, he melts, he's the wind god. And now and again he get, he has a bit of an uppity against his uh, other brothers and causes a storm, tangaroa and so <coughs> forth. So these are metaphorically put into a, uh, into religion and the environment incorporated over a period of time. So that's how we make our LORES, our laws, based on, on that. <coughs> now, because I'm supposed to be in a hurry, <coughs> I want to explain the, this, this uh, Kubla Gosh at the moment. <coughs> it looks like that at the moment. But originally, I got the, this document comes from Pat Hohepa, Dr. Pat Hohepa, their in uh, Weimar. And uh, I went to challenge the health department at that particular time over the release of the body, release of the two papaku, because I, we accused them of using the two papaku to, to uh, explore, to explore, to invent. Uh, and one night we actually caught them out. We went in and and watery and, and caught them out. And as a consequence, I think uh, Donna Hall, she was just studying law at that particular time. We got her to do a submission for us, one page submission. That submission was about the releasing of the body in a timely manner. And of course, I think Dr. Pete, Peter Tapsall, took it to Parliament. And of course, that's the the argument of a re releasing the two papakus. So that was one, one of the particular issues as well. I got tied up with, with that crowd at the particular time. And uh, Pat Hohepa's uncle was the one that wrote this in about 1924. <clears throat> but also related to that family, Akiri Bird's in-laws, they connected to the same family, and uh, the Parados from Ngāti Pikiā. They, they also connected to the, to the authors of, who wrote this thing. Along the outside here, you have the amount of days in the month. That's what that just simply says, days in the month. These lines here, five phases of the moon. The moon goes through characterizes five, five changes. The beginning of the month is all fetal. Now my calculations, I, that's one of my homeworks I've done, I think. All fetal, the next all fetal is on the 22nd of August. So if you've got an old diary, even this, this, this year's diary, just log in all fetal being the 22nd of August. And from then, you take all those Nga Marama Tapo, the moonlight nights. You, you follow it down in synchronized order. And then you go back, repeat it again when you get to Ofiro. So essentially, that's how you, you read that. Those quarters go into the quarters, the phases of the moon. On this side here, you'll see the noughts and crosses. That's, and there's an evaluation. Get to understand those in your, in your own time. <laughs> Get to, and put it in plain English in your own time. And then you will get a better understanding of mixing and matching the noughts and crosses with the marama or the po and the phases of the moon. I also wanted to expand on uh, how Tarawa arrived here. There's, there's two lines of story. Some say came from the White Island, Whangaparawa in the east, and some say Whangaparawa in the north. Now it's likely to be Whangaparawa in the north, because if we go by following our Dimi gods, like Maui, <laughs> then we would have came from the north. You see, when Maui chased the fish, it was supposed to be an octopus, you see. But 
when you have a look at the shape of the North Island, it actually looks like a shark. The hikotika, the, the tail of the fish is up north, you see. And of course, when, you, when I've been questioned, I've been questioned about that. So I thought your Maori history says that uh, it was octopus. I said, who cares, it was a fish anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they followed the fish. And we didn't all arrive here at once in 1350 AD. That's nonsense. There's, there was transitional movements going right back to the time of Maui. Yeah. And um, to, to the time of Maui. And we had all those moon and tides and that are, are integrated. Now I just want to <coughs> briefly talk about Tiahu Opawa. I think it's, there's a waiata about the, the my kukutia, this word. Now, Ngātaroi Rangi, we know that there was quite some skillful people on the Tarawa Waka. That was because today, Tamata Kapua would have been a brilliant CEO. He probably would have been the best CEO in the world. Yeah. But some of his actions, um, he would have probably been in jail today. <laughs> Pudebu and all those things, you know. But he, he, he did that he did that because it was to create populations, a population that will provide an economy. Now that's part of our demographic uh, economics. It'll 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 create an economy of that time. So if you wanted that land across the river, what I done what I'd do is get all my sons lined up and cause a war with them across the river. Then the second stage would to make peace with them. And the third stage would be to marry them off, intermarry to make peace. Hence, you've got the land. And of course, these are strategically, you couldn't say that we weren't strategic. We're very, very strategic. Our, our people were very strategic. But going back to the Yahoo of, of power, what happened there was Ngātaroirangi, Manaya, came out to seek revenge. And Ngātaroirangi says, well, wait till the morning. And which he knew that the, that the, the, the ahu of power, the, the, the cross currents of the tides, were going to, going to meet. Yeah. And how that happens is a northwest wind will come down from the Kermites. That's the White <coughs> Island. And the... Uh, the southwest wind will come from Pa Tangata. There's a pa on the Papamore Hills called Pa, pa Tangata. There's an old queer in there. And her name is Rangi Whakahukia. Rangi Whakaoma is on Bawa. When that wind, when there's a connection between that wind and, and the, the queer up the hill there and the queer on, on what's well, the southwest wind. And when that runs the same time as the northwest wind, and it just has to be a slight breeze doesn't matter, will cause a cross current. And normally, the people in Magatū know when that, when that tides, but they don't know how it comes about. What happens is a kua kua comes up, this big, big pippy comes up from the deep sea. It's, it churns up the sea. Well, that was the wind that killed uh, Manaya when he came to seek revenge with Ngātaroira. And of course, he ended up along Papamore Beach here. There's a place called Ōtira. The Ōtira is where Kahununu's mother comes from Waitaha. There was Waitaha, Ruarangi, Ruarangi, Iwi, Iwi Pūpū, Iwi Pūpū, Kahununu. And then there was Waitaha, uh, Waitaha, Ruarangi, Iwi Parapara, the Ngāti Rangi Nui. So they, they, that's the connection with, the, with, the, with that coastline. Anyway, when, the, uh, when that wind occurred, Manaya ended up on, at uh, Maikukutia, a place called Ōtira, with the place I'm just describing you where, where, uh, where the, the, the children of Iwi Pupu and Iwi Parapara, Kahununu and... and uh, and Ranginui 
where they decided who was Tuakana and who was Taina uh, from <coughs> over there. Now, my kugutia was also goes back into the Tarawa history with Punga, Punga the shark. Yeah. Now, there was certain Tarawa tohunga who had the ability to collaborate with the sharks. They had a way, a relationship that's built over centuries. And uh, my kugutia is a, is a battle formation. And it could, and some say that the cutting of the gums of the shark was part and parcel of inciting the sharks to assist you in battle. Yeah. And uh, all these sort of things. Now there's, um, there's three sides to the story. There's yours, mine, and somewhere in the middle lies the truth. And that's Māori oral history. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you've got a grip of that, uh, I, uh, I don't need to go on any further. Yeah.